You see, their focus was on the immediate situation. Their focus was selfish. But Jesus was focused on an ultimate situation. You know, we want to criticize this crowd and decry their fickle, seemingly disloyal behavior. But in many ways, we are much like them. Because we want what we want right now. And if it doesn't happen, we want to cry, where is God? Why did he let this happen? Why has God forsaken us? Many times we look around the world and we wonder, why is God allowing this to happen? Why were there earthquakes in Japan? Why are, did the nuclear reactors there give way? Why are there wars? Why are people killing one another? Why are children being abused? Jill Caratini, who writes for a devotion called Slice of Infinity, has some sobering words. She says, it is this drama that is still religiously inactive. What I longed to imagine was a fickle crowd, an illustration of the power of knob think, or a sign of a hard-hearted people, only reminds me of my own vacillations with the Son of God. How easily our de declarations that He is Lord become denials of His existence. How readily hands waving in praise and celebration become fists raised at the heavens in pain or hardship. Like a palm laid down and forgotten, the honor we bestow on Sunday can easily be abandoned by Wednesday. Thank God that Jesus knows their hearts and he knows ours now. Thank God that despite our selfishness, despite our lack of loyalty, he loves us still. Despite all that is not like God in us, he ever lives to intercede on our behalf and lift up our names before the Father. You see, he had us in mind when he was making that ride into Jerusalem. He had us in mind uh -huh. when he went to that cross. Yes. He had the ultimate victory yes. in mind. Hallelujah. Third, there's a cleansing of the temple. And Jesus' use of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah says, And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. When Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he immediately went into the temple and drove out the money changers and the sellers of doves. This is the second time Jesus came to cleanse the temple. With the first in John chapter two, Jesus publicly began his ministry. This second cleansing was Jesus' messianic work of preparing for the perfect sacrifice. You see, at this time of year, the Jews would come for the preparation of the service in the temple, especially at Passover. The people were required to get the materials, the wood, the oil, the animals, and everything that was needed to begin the massive sacrifices that would last and allow them to be forgiven of their sins for the rest of the year. And it was a massive undertaking. So on the one hand, Jesus was presenting himself as the prophet and the king. But on the other, he was presenting himself as the lamb of God yes. that takes away the sin of the earth. He was their Passover lamb. Yes. Yes. The presence of these money changers and the corruption that was going on in the temple had been a problem since the temple was built. Mm -hmm. If you read in the book of Jeremiah and in the book of Isaiah, you hear them also admonishing the people about making this temple a den of robbers and thieves. You see, the Jews believed that as long as they had the temple standing, no matter what they did, they could just go into the temple and it was a sanctuary and nothing could harm them. But Jesus was saying, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. 
Hallelujah. Yes. yes. There's a lot of stuff just like this going on in the church today. Our church is no better than this temple and the Jews were with respect to the church. Amen. One of the things I appreciate about my Lutheran upbringing is that there was a high respect for the holiness of God in the sanctuary. Amen. We had to be quiet in the sanctuary because it was a holy place. Amen. And I think sometimes in our Pentecostal circles and our exuberance for ministry, we forget that. We're marching up and down the aisles. We're talking to and praise and worship. And there's no reverence for the presence of God. And then sometimes we wonder why there isn't a move of God in the house. It's because we don't respect and reverence the presence of a holy God. And I don't know if you know it or not, but the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Amen. So whether we can tangibly feel it or not, Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we need to reverence the presence of the Holy God. Amen. False prophets are on the rise in our nation today. Just as in his time, when Jesus was marching the earth, there were many people that claimed to be the Messiah. He warned his disciples that after he ascended, there would be many that would say, I'm the Christ, go out here, look here, go there. And right now today, there are many false prophets. There are many on our Christian channels. Hallelujah. Making false promises yes. if we give. Mm -hmm. I want to say to you that you all need to, all of us need to pray. Yes. Because we are in those days yes. when it's difficult to discern the truth yes. unless we are so rooted and grounded in this world. Because they sound right. They look right. They're on channels that we trust. And we call ourselves being filled and refreshed. But in among the, the wheat are the tears. We need to be careful. We need to pray about where to sow our seed. Now God is going to honor the seed because he honors the heart of the giver. Amen. But we need to really pray about where we're sowing our seed. Not only that, there are many who are falling away. Many that we trusted. You all know the story about Carlton Pearson. But there's another on the horizon. He's on the front cover of Time Magazine. This came in the mail yesterday. And it reads, what if there is no hell? And it's an evangelical minister who is challenging whether Jesus is the only way and whether there's a hell, and who went and who didn't. And this is a great affront to the body of Christ because these affronts are coming from within. These aren't people on the outside who don't know the Lord. These are people coming from the in. This man has a church with 7,000 members. We need to pray, people of God. Yes. Hell is a very real place. Yes. Don't let anybody tell you yes. there is no hell. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hell was not made for you and I. Yes. Hell was made for some angels who rebelled. Yes. But if you choose not to come into the kingdom, if you choose not to have a relationship with the Lord, yes. then hell is a place where you will go. Yes. And it's a place of eternal fire yes. and damnation. Yes. People are flipped about it. Well, I'll be down there with my friends. 
it's a place of torment. I challenge you to read Abraham's story and how the rich young ruler prayed for just a drop of water. 